Hey everyone, welcome to my garage. My name is Paul and tonight I'm going to show you how to make a template and why they are so important and helpful. The template we're going to make tonight is going to be for this candle holder. and This holds five of these nice little tea lights that are super cheap and you can put this anywhere around your house. I like to keep mine on the middle of the dining room table. And this is a great gift that you can make for a bunch of people around Christmas time or birthdays, anniversaries, whatever. Um, so because we're going to be making a bunch of them, it'll be helpful for us to make a template. And trust me, it'll cut our time down drastically when we're making more than one of them. I'll show you guys a template that I already made. Um, this is a wine rack that I've made a bunch of. They're great as gifts. Um, probably sell them for a decent amount of money. Um, but super simple, just uses some dowels and then some holes. So a hole saw on this side and a uh, fortunate bit on this side. So I'll show you my template that I made. Uh, get it right way up, yeah. So you can see I've got, previously when I made the first couple I had to measure out equally all of these holes um, and try to figure out you know, how to space them evenly. I also made a couple of different versions of the wine rack itself before I settled on one that I really liked. And then I decided to take the time to make a template. It only took me about an hour, but in the next five that I made, I probably saved myself about three or four hours. So what this is, these are the holes. Now they're in the same place on both sides in this particular model. Um, they're just different sizes, but they're in the same spot. And then the dowels go into holes in the same spot. So I gave myself a bunch of, um, a bunch of clues. Like I always encourage people to do, give yourself tips for later on. So for example, these holes for the dowels that go across, I have stop signs that I drew on there so that I know not to go all the way through. Um, these ones, you can go all the way through. That's why I put little check marks on there. It tells me the overall width of this, which is five and a half inches, and the overall length, which is 22 and a half inches. So, and that tells me that the dowels need to be seven inches long. So next time I go to make one of these, all I have to do is pull this out of my box and then cut it to length and then just start going. I can lay this over the top of my material as I'm drilling my holes. This tells me what size of holes I need in the different spots. And so this does all the work for me, basically. I gave myself a giant cheat sheet, which is all a template really is. So let's get to making the one for the candle holder. Now, in my experience, it's by far easiest to make a template after you've already built something. Because the first time you make something, you might make some plans, you might even do it in SketchUp and draw a 3D model and all that. But in my experience, there's always a couple of curveballs that are going to show up, even in a simple task like this. And so I like to make my templates off of something that I've already made. And then you already know all of the, uh, the curveballs that are going to come your way. And you can plan around those, maybe even make, you make yourself some notes. So the first step is we need to choose our material for our template. We want to choose something that is not going to stretch and collapse a whole lot uh, with, um, with humidity. So usually some manufactured products rather than actual hardwood or softwood are probably best. Something that we can rely on that's going to hold its shape, hold its measurements, so that we can always come back to it no matter what time of year it is. For my template tonight, I'm going to use one of these sheets of material. It's this type that's smooth on one side and coarse on the other. I used, I bought this so that I could uh, replace the bottom of a drawer in my home. Um, I'm not quite sure what this is called. It says HDBD PNL on it, um, but this is basically eighth inch material that is manufactured and it will not, it's not going to expand and contract based on the weather or the climate. So this is what we're going to use. Okay, because we're going to make some repeating, uh, we basically need to mimic what we already have. Again, we want to use our uh, combination square because it's just super, super easy. I don't remember which what dimensions I've built this to before, but theoretically we could do this even without any measurements whatsoever. That might be a fun video in the future to make a video, make something without using any measurements. Let me know if you guys want to see that. So it looks like this is nine inches. It's a little bit over, but we'll round it down to nine. So let's triple down nine inches long. by, looks like two and a half inches wide. So now we just need to cut our stock down. We're only gonna need one, and uh, let's go ahead and do that. Alright, 
easy enough. We've got our 9 inch by 2.5 inch that matches up to our original. So now it's time to lay out these holes. All right, now that we've got our, uh, our base of our template here, we really don't even need measurements. <laughs> How often do you hear woodworkers say that? So um, what I'd like to do first is let's figure out where these holes are located. What's the smartest way to do this? Um, well, you know, I think I can just... I think I'm going to take my combination square and go to the center of each hole. And if I did it right before, the two outside ones should be the same distance from the edge. Same with the two middle ones. And then the center one should be right dead in the middle. So half of nine is four and a half, so it should be right there. So, let's see, that's... Looks like I was probably going for inch and a half. Yep. I usually work with pretty round numbers. So again, all we need to do is transfer it with our combination square. Make a line there. It's kind of hard to see on this material. So inch and a half from either end, and then what's next? Three inches, dead on the money. And this, so it looks like I was going at one and a half inch increments. I made this thing a couple of years ago, like about a year and a half ago. So I, it's kind of ringing a bell, but I don't, don't remember off the top of my head what all I did. So here is midway. Once I have my holes cut and so on, then I'm going to probably use a silver sharpie to, um, to, to write on here so that I can actually read it. So, our stock is two and a half inches wide, which means that we need to go to three quarters of an inch to be right down the middle of it. Or no, one and a quarter, sorry. Give myself some crisscrosses right here. You know what? I don't like that middle. I don't know if you guys can see that middle line somehow got really, really wide on me. So I'm going to redo that because it is the template. So if this one's wrong, they're all going to be wrong. Four and a half. Okay, and then that's two, one and a quarter, let me just do that one more time, nice little crisscross in the middle. Okay, so now we have these holes are laid out on our template, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill some little holes in there, in there uh, so that we have solid center points, and I'll show you why we're not drilling the whole thing out here in a second. So I'm going to use a hole punch to transfer my holes from the template into the stock that I'm eventually using. And so I need to find something that's just big enough where the center of this can fit through it. I think we'll go with this guy, which is a 530 seconds. By the way, having this table on here that we made, oh, it's been so great. Make sure I can get through my stock and I can. lined up here. Okay, now also while we're over here, we're going to look at our Forstner bits that I've got down here. And I'm going to figure out which size I used when I made this before. So all I'm going to do is go through a couple of these, figure out which one fits it perfectly. Looks like we got a winner here with uh, a one and a half inch. So now I can write myself a little note on the template that I need a one and a half inch Forstner bit to make those holes. 
Okay, now that we've got our center holes, I want to start marking this. So we said we needed an inch and a half hole, so it's much easier to see these silver Sharpies. I definitely recommend picking one up just to have on hand. They're a couple bucks for a two-pack. So we need a one and one half inch bit for these. So now we have that done. Uh, let's go ahead and leave ourselves a nine and a half inches this direction, this direction, and then this way is two and a half. Oh, not nine and a half, it was nine inches. This way. Okay. That would have messed up. <laughs> would have been a dumb mistake. Okay. Next, I want to get the holes for um, for these dowels. Now you can see right here that in the first time I did it, these holes are not all perfectly equidistant from the edge. And so you end up with this weird little funky, uh, kind of crooked looking thing. This is why it's just mine and I didn't give it away to anybody. You don't know, give it to somebody I don't like who's Christmas. <laughs> um, but that's the nice thing is that these will all be in the same place um, on both sides. It's symmetrical this way. So once we decide where these holes are in relation, let's say, to the edge, then it shouldn't be that difficult. I believe I'm using quarter inch dowel. Yep, quarter inch is probably what I used before, it looks like it. So I'll just use the same quarter inch dowel again. Um, so we just kind of need to decide where we want these holes to live in relation to the edge. I know that we have to be careful not to do go into you know, where our holes are here, but let's see what it looks like if we go see what a quarter inch looks like. And the nice thing is we already have the real thing. So for a quarter inch here, a quarter inch here, I think that's just fine for the corners and it should be okay for the edges to, yeah, we'll just have to be careful to make sure we go right in between these. Yeah, a quarter inch should be just fine. So we'll transfer that mark over here. Let's go a quarter inch from the edge here and here. And going to be one right in between these two, so I'll go ahead and make my mark there. And if you're making this, you don't have to put as many legs as you want as I did in there. This is just kind of how I did it. Um, so, quarter inch all the way around. It's just easier to make it the same length from both sides. If you wanted to put it at some funky interval, uh, we did it Yep. You can make it however you want. This is just how I'm doing it. So, make sure all my crosses have crosses. And then I'm going to have to figure out what this is, which, again, we can just use our, our original. We're going to be in between these lines here, so. It's looking like um, four inches. Yeah. No, not quite. Let's. How about three and three quarters? Yeah, I like that. So for our two middle ones, it's all justifying off of the edges. And this will keep it symmetrical for when we do the bottom. So the, the bottom and the top are going to be facing each other. If you had. If you had dimensions that were not symmetrical, then you would have to make two templates, one for the top and one for the bottom. You know what I mean? Because it's going into this side and going into this side. So if, if it's, let's say we were, uh, if they weren't, if they weren't the same edge, same distance from the edges, then you'd have to have one for each direction that you're going into. And you'd have to keep track of that, which I like to make symmetrical things just because it's a lot easier. Okay, now I'm going to go back and make these same holes um, with that 5 30 seconds bit. And um, I'll show you why I haven't drilled these out to the entire size that, uh, that they're eventually going to be.
material kind of tended to tear out on the front and the back. It's not, you know, something that's supposed to look super nice. Um, but I do want it to be flat so it can fit flush against the, the wood that I'm working with. So what I'm going to do is uh, just hit it with the belt sander real quick and knock these edges down. Okay, now these are a lot more cleaned up. And I'm going to go ahead and mark, put my marks on here. I'll show you guys that too. In the back is much better, so now it'll sit flat next to my stock. Um, now the reason I'm using these holes is that I want to put a punch through them. This is the punch I was actually looking for. This is a spring-loaded punch. This is a great tool to have. So you push on it, and then at some point it, it pops right back and puts a really, uh, really uh, defined dent in your stock. So that gives you a really easy reference to see where you're drilling. But not only that, it also um, uh, it also guides the drill bit a little bit too if you're working with a small drill bit, and it gives it a head start. So you can see that my, my punch goes right through easily. That's all I needed to do. So I'll put it through these big holes to uh, give myself the guide for the big Forstner holes. And then this guy, um, we'll just probably use a um, quarter inch drill bit, but I can still give myself that head start. And uh, up next, let's go ahead and mark this out. And then I think we might just about be done with this thing. All right, now we've got our, our uh, dowel holes figured out. I'm going to give myself a tip, and I'm also going to try to keep orienting the same direction. So this is one quarter inch dowel. For this one, I think I wish I would have had like a silver, those you know, those, those fine tip sharpies, because this is just such a small thing to write on. Okay, so I'm going to outline these as circles. These ones all have crisscrosses, so, or, or um, crosshairs or whatever you want to call them. So there, we've got ourselves a template. There is one last thing that I think I'm going to do uh, for this template is I'm going to figure out what the length of these dowels is because that's one more little head start that I can give myself. So, I mean, I can just do that real quick. You can see this gap that I gave myself is uh, about one and three quarters inch, but I think I'm going to shorten that to one and a half. So what I can do is this material is half inch thick, so one and a half, and we go into each one by a quarter inch, so one and a half plus a quarter on each side, that's uh, two inches. So the dowels need to be two inches long. So I'm going to give myself uh, a note, dowels two inches, two inches long. Well that about does it for this video guys. Um, I just wanted to show you real quick how to make a template that will help us in the future. On the next video, we're gonna use our template to actually make one of these and hopefully make it not quite so crooked with these uh, these dowels. Um, I'm not gonna post any of the, uh, the dimensions anywhere. Uh, it's super simple. You guys saw me make these measurements and you can modify it however you want. Leave a comment down below how you guys might have uh, improved on this process and um, we'll see you guys on the next one when we make one of these for real. Thanks, have a good night.